Hi, let's start with something fun today. Since I started this world in 1.20, we've barely touched the new update. Sure, I live in a cherry grove, but I don't have camels, I only have half the armor trims, I only got the netherite template last episode, and I don't have sniffers. So I'm going to start today by collecting sniffers. I'd like to build a large sniffer farm later, but for now, I just need two to be able to breed them. Sniffers can only be found in warm ocean ruins and must be dusted from suspicious sand using the new brush. I know where at least one large warm ocean is, so let's start here. As far as the rest of today's plan, I want to be able to do two really big farms. First, a sugarcane farm for paper, so I have basically unlimited rockets, and then a huge hogland farm with shulker loaders, basically an improved version of my own very fast hogland farm. We'll do a few other necessary projects like moving villagers into the villager hall finally, making a pumpkin farm and a flower farm, but the main goal will be those two big farms. Sniffer eggs have a 6.7% chance of spawning in warm ocean ruins, which means we should find these pretty easily, honestly. At least those odds are a lot better than when I go looking for all the armor trims, which I think we'll do next episode. One thing I do know about these ruins is there's always a drowned here to start. Unlike normal spawning algorithms, these guys are just spawned here when the ruins are generated. Unless they're wielding tridents, I generally don't care about the drowned of these things, but since the brushing does take a while, I think I'm gonna have to kill them as we go. For some reason, some people have a really hard time spotting the suspicious sand and gravel, and other people have no trouble at all. I'll have no trouble at all, so I'll just be doing this, but if you're wondering how I know which is which, there's a slight difference in the textures between the two, and I play this game a lot, so I can see the difference pretty easily. If you are struggling with it, there are texture packs you can get that'll highlight the suspicious sand and gravel, and that can help you out quite a lot. Okay, a couple of ruins in, and I've found nothing. I'll never pass up the chance for free trims at shipwrecks, though, so I did stop at quite a few of these along the way. As I headed over to this shipwreck to loot it, I eventually spotted a pretty nice-sized ruin. This is a single building, but they often have quite a bit more suspicious sand than the smaller units. First, we'll take care of this drowned. Can you spot the suspicious sand now? Most of the ones in this particular ruin are hidden, but there's one really obvious one. See if you can spot it. Some of the treasure from this is quite bad. My first two sand here was a gold nugget and a piece of wheat. That's a little bit of a waste of time. I know a lot of people don't like this archaeology mechanic, but I actually quite like it. I love not knowing what I'm going to get and then discovering it. Even if it's just a candle or something, it's always a little bit of fun. I can take my tiny little dopamine hit and move on. Alright, look at this! It's our first sniffer egg! That's awesome and didn't take too long, just a couple of ancient ruins. The advancement for this is called Smells Interesting. Okay then, you never really want something to be called interesting, do you? Especially a smell. Let's not think about it too hard. I'm done with that war motion, so I'll need to move to another. Must repair my wings first, though. Get a refill on my rockets, and it'll be time to head back out. Finding another war motion took me quite a while, but once I did, I was super happy with the one that I found. Look at this terrain. Whenever I find something like this that's just an absolutely crazy area, I always take coordinates down. A couple of screenshots. That way, if we want to come back here, we can. I easily also found this really good-sized ruins. I bet we can find another 10 or 12 suspicious sand here, and maybe our second sniffer egg. There was definitely a few more drowned to kill in here. One of them even had a trident, and I'll never pass up a chance to get a free trident. But he wasn't offering, so oh well. I should bring water breathing potions to do this as I had to hit the surface a few times just to breathe, but honestly I had a feeling this ruins would just be good to me. The first sand that I uncovered was a wooden hoe. That's actually hot trash. But the very next one though, look at that. It's our second sniffer egg. In the end it wasn't too hard to find those, I just had to find the war motions to begin with. I excavated for a little longer, but it was mostly trash. A wooden shovel, another stone hoe, things like that, so I left. Before I actually leave though, let me show you around this area one more time, make sure I've got the coordinates down. It's such a great area, we could definitely come back here to build one day. I really love the sheer cliff faces, especially the ones overlooking the coral reef like this. Once I get a bunch of eggs collected, I'll make a much larger sniffer farm, but for today, all I want to do is set up the smallest little pen right in my house, and just be able to collect the eggs that we're going to need to build that larger farm later. So we're going to start from our two sniffer eggs, but eventually I want 20 or 30 or more running around finding seeds and making us more eggs. The farm itself is super easy, it's barely a farm. I'm going to use a hopper minecart to collect all the stuff that gets dropped from above and that's it. Put the eggs in here and with the fence around it they can't get out and that's it, it's done. Next thing I want to do is a quick redstone pumpkin farm. The key word is redstone so we're going to need to hit the raid farm for a little while. Even with this raid farm I'm still constantly out of redstone dust and redstone components. I haven't spent a ton of time here yet, but I could use like a 4 hours of raid farm soon. Let's speed this up and go build the farm. This is 40 times normal speed. That'll get the job done. Okay, that'll do. Oh, and yeah, I do trade for some of the redstone that I need, but I need more clerics. We'll take care of that later today. Before we head back out, let me show you what we got. It's snifflets. The little baby sniffers hatched while I was hitting the raid farm. I'm glad we get to see them as babies and they weren't fully grown yet. Watch his nose. Onto this pumpkin farm, and I'm kind of tired of having to manually collect pumpkins. For some reason, we need them frequently in this world. Whether that's been for the bartering farm, shulker farm, or for iron and snow golems and other farms. It feels like every episode lately it's been some kind of go and collect pumpkins, so let's automate that today. 
This farm will double as a melon farm if you plant those seeds instead, but because I rarely use melons and I feel like I've been using a ton of pumpkins, I'm going to leave it as pumpkin only for now. The collection system for this is quite similar to the sniffer farm actually, I'm just going to get a hopper minecart on some powered rails, it's going to go around and around and collect all the drops from the farm. The cart will drop all the loot into the hoppers it runs over, and because it's not a super fast but just a very consistent farm, having just two hoppers here should be more than plenty to keep the cart empty. These redstone torches will power the rail, and then I can put the farm just above the collection system. Water on the slab and then light over the top of that, and then we can start hoeing the ground and planting seeds. A temporary roof will go over the top to let me place my pistons that face down above each of the non-seed spots, and then I can remove the roof and face observers straight down into the stems so I can see when they change. Basically, the observers will see when the stem grows a new pumpkin, triggering all the pistons around it to fire, so anytime a stem grows a pumpkin, we'll immediately break it off. This redstone dust is all we need now to complete the farm. One dust will go on each observer, and that's what will trigger the pistons around it. The farm is done, and I could just wait for these to grow, but a little bone meal will speed up the process. The stems can be bone mealed from babies to fully grown and then be ready to produce pumpkins, but you can't actually grow the pumpkin with the bone meal. But then after just a few seconds, we'll have our first pumpkin in the chest and the farm is fully operational. Next on our list today is that big sugarcane farm. Well, technically getting redstone for the sugarcane farm. Again, it uses quite a lot. I need more clerics to trade with. The sugarcane farm I'm making is by Tango Tech and is tileable. I'll be making quite a few of those tiled modules today. Tango's farm may be five years old, but it's still one of the best sugarcane designs there is. I'll need to shulker load this farm eventually, but for now, I'll just run everything into this chest. Anywho, let's get to building. Okay, so after building 50 modules of this, we're already getting a lot of sugarcane coming in. Oh yeah, I didn't mention it earlier, but I also built a quick rail duper in front of the sugarcane farm. That'll help us later. Our biggest project for today is actually a large version of my own hoglin farm design, but improved in a couple of key ways. The problem is the farm takes thousands of soul sand and almost a thousand lava buckets to make at full size. I've already done some bartering for soul sand, but it's not fast enough to get all of it that way, so I got to mine for some first. I'll get about half the rails I need from the gold farm and our redstone stocks, but then I'm going to use the new duper on the other half. I've never used a rail duper before, and I'm not sure that we'll keep it, but it definitely came in handy for this huge project. I collected about four shulkers of soul sand, but my shovel's gonna break, so I had to call it there and repair. So let's talk about this Hoglin farm. It's a design that I came up with and modified with a viewer after seeing a Hoglin die in a soul sand valley. The farm produces over 60,000 cooked pork per hour, which is way more than I should ever need. It's over 30 shulkers per hour. The farm is improved now in a couple of key ways. We're gonna be automatically loading the drops into 6x speed shulker loaders and dropping them into the system with minecart yeeting, basically breaking the cart and dropping everything instantly each time it gets to the storage system. The spawning and killing area on the farm is a massive soul sand and lava floor, and basically the way the farm works is in the configuration of lava that I use, a hoglin can spawn, but instantly starts dying in lava. There's nowhere for them to go. This means that the mob cap is constantly full, but also constantly being emptied as quickly as possible. It's one of the best, fastest hoglin farms that exists, and I do have a block by block tutorial on my channel for the slightly older version. Throughout this project, there are a number of things that you'll see happen. Number one, I'll need to fight off mobs as I build the rail platform as well as the soul sand and lava platform. And number two, I'll need hundreds more buckets of lava before we finish. Just so you know, this farm is definitely overkill for single player Minecraft. However, I designed it, so I kind of have to go all in and build the biggest, fullest version possible. If you build this or you build it from a tutorial, cut down to about a quarter of this size and you'll still be fine, I promise.
Dying in hardcore Minecraft can happen fast. Sometimes it doesn't matter how seasoned of a player you are. So here's your lesson for today. If you're standing in lava and don't want to die, move. I backed into a lava source here and didn't realize it. I did have a fire res in my hotbar and knew when to use it, or this would have been totem number one for the world. This got me down to one heart. One heart, because I'm standing in lava, still. Yes, I should have booped the little piglin snoots instead of trying to kill them. I hope you realize I'm still standing in lava. I don't know why, but let's get back to building the farm. This farm is absolutely OP. You can see it at work here. The babies live sometimes for a few seconds, and the adults give us cooked pork and leather in huge amounts. I'm gonna grab a shulker of pork for now and head home. And yes, I use brown shulkers for food because I use cooked pork chops and they're brown. So stop judging me. Three episodes ago, I built a villager trading hall, yet my villagers sit here underground and I haven't expanded from the original batch, even though I have another 20 or so bred up and ready to get jobs. So let's move these villagers over and bring some from the breeder into the hall today. That way I can set up a few extra clerics and trade for a lot more redstone, as we seem to constantly need it. I know I can set up a rail line and just push them all over one by one, but honestly, moving workstations was the easier way for me. So I lured every villager from the old underground holes into the new trading hall. Once I get everyone set up, I'll move a zombie into each of the runs and get some weakness potions too. Carrying the villagers is super simple, and in addition to extra clerics, I'll set up the rest of the librarian trades as well as set up extra stonemasons and a few other traders as we keep going. Connecting them to their own workstations is also fairly straightforward. I can lure them into a pod, move the workstation from the back to the front, and everyone is good. It's a bit more tricky with the librarians and sometimes I have to block in the pod, but it's not too bad and I quickly got all the villagers moved in. Once the old villagers were moved out of here, I filled in the original trader hall. There's no way I want mobs spawning down here, surprising me when I open it up later to do some terraforming. I also wanted to know it was gone and that I'd made some good progress. While I was filling this in and removing it, all I could think was that in another 500 or 1000 or even 2500 days, we're going to completely forget that this ever existed. People who pick up the series late won't even know it was ever here. Don't believe me? When was the last time you thought about my episode 1 creeper farm? For the new villagers, I could lure them the same way, but in this case I found it way easier just to minecart them into the system. Push the button a few times, set them up, push the button a few times, it was pretty easy. With all the new villagers moved in, it's time to remove all the evidence that this was even here. And now that we have a lot more clerics, trading for redstone becomes actually viable. With one villager, you can only get a little bit of redstone every day, but with virtually unlimited emeralds from the raid farm, and now with way more clerics, we can trade for many stacks per day. And then a quick check in on the sniffer shows that our efforts are being rewarded with almost a stack of pitcher pods and a lot of new eggs. Then with the hoglin farm up for food and the guardian farm up for XP, I won't need nearly this many animals taking up the chunks around spawn, so we can thin the herd a little as well. A little world cleanup never hurts. Me. Back to trading and I can pick up a few extra stacks of redstone. This is going to be nice having these now. I can certainly find a use for an extra six stacks or so every day. The next project and the last farm for today is a too high flower farm. I want to start working on dyes today and so far the only ones I can produce in huge quantity are red from the iron farm poppies and brown from the cocoa farm. I guess black from the withered rose farm but I don't really run that very often it's not super fast. So today we'll take care of the two high flowers, roses, peonies, lilacs, and sunflowers. I don't have sunflowers yet so I needed to find that first. Needless to say I didn't have great luck. Eventually I did manage to find this patch, which was about 4,500 blocks from home. Yoink. A too high flower farm is a very simple little machine. I'm going to put some dirt above these hoppers, water in the middle, hoe the land, plant the flowers, and run four dispensers filled with bone meal directly at them. The flowers will fall down, get collected, easy farm. I'll definitely start with one of each flower type, but if I need an extreme amount of red dye, it's not super hard to change which flowers I'm bone mealing through the trap doors. Also, I really wish you got more than three different colors from this. Having two that produce the same dye is so weird to me. That's a ridiculous little farm. 
before we end today, I want to work on two interiors for the starter base. The first thing I want to do is make an office. This will be our login and logout spot in the world and will be where we keep our most valuable items. This concept's not new, it's not mine. I know at least two other people who do this, so thanks to Linksy and Dame the Dime for the inspiration on this one, but it's too good. I want a place to plan, sit, talk to you, and a place where I can just feel completely at home and safe. The minecart will let me sit down, and in front of that I want a desk. I'm not going to over-design the room for now because I want to keep improving it and growing it as the world gets older, but I'm going to start with some bookshelves, a place to keep a journal, we'll move Loki up to this room to sit with me, and I want to display some of our most valuable and important world items like our very first pickaxe, which I've saved since the beginning. Outside of that, this room should be at least relatively functional, with an ender chest, a crafting table, and so on. I'm going to put a little research desk off to the side, and for now I'll just have a beacon on that, but I think long term we can use that even more. Let's get most of this built. These four armor stands are very, very important to me. They represent certain parts of the community and certain friends and hardcore players that I've met. They'll welcome me into the room every time I enter, and I'm pretty sure those represented will know who they are, and sometimes the color will represent more than one person, so I'll leave it to your imaginations who is who. I love the idea of coming out of this chair, running across the room, and just zooming out to work on our projects in the world. I'll have to figure out a better way to get between floors, but for now I can just fly. The next and final room to work on today is a small bedroom. In this room I want to make a fake big bed surrounding a real bed so I can set spawn here. I want to lightly decorate but leave plenty of room to add to this room as the world keeps growing as well. We'll make more memories as we go and there's no point over designing and wanting a place to place valuables in here later. A screen, a little storage, some candles and decor, and a hidden bed within a bed should do it for this room.
While I was decorating, I decided to add a back door so we could head out the other way if we want as well. I also cleaned up this main floor a little bit as it was getting a bit out of hand. One last check on our sniffers and we now have 14 new eggs and plenty of plant seeds. So that's it, sniffers, pumpkins, sugarcane, hoglin farm, moved to some villagers, two high flower farm, and two room interiors. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.